How's it going guys? John here from the Reaper blog. Today we're going to be looking at some actions for merging and splitting MIDI items or imploding and exploding MIDI items and all the things you need to know about those topics. So I've got a MIDI item here. Let's just listen to it. So it's an organ sound. There's chords playing in the low note and then there's some higher notes playing an arpeggio on top. And also if I look at the note properties, the low notes are channel one. And if I go up to the top, these higher notes are actually channel three. So just hypothetical situation, uh, someone wrote this in another program, they exported it and it merged all the MIDI channels to one file. So that's kind of what I've duplicated or replicated here or set up for us here. So the low notes are on channel one, the higher notes are on channel three. I'm going to use an action called explode multi-channel audio or MIDI to new one channel items. Let's see what that does. All right, so now we have three tracks for this instrument. The top track, the original track is now a folder. The plugin, the virtual instrument's still there. The original item is still there, but it's now muted. So this, this item here is no longer active. And then it's split up the low notes and the high notes onto two separate tracks. If we play it, it's gonna sound exactly the same. It's still kept everything that was originally there. It's just split it up into separate channels. But now I can uh, just drag this down to this other track that I have already set up with another, another virtual instrument to make uh, this arpeggio sound. Let's get rid of this first file. And let's do that again, but in the opposite direction. Let's implode it. So if you're looking for a MIDI merge, this is the closest thing that's built in for that. Implode items across tracks into items on one track. So I have these two items selected. I'm going to run this action. It's going to put them together onto one item. So it's taken those two items, put them together on a single track. But there's a catch here. There's something you're not seeing. Right now we're seeing both of these items layered. Um, the items are actually sitting on top of each other. And if we drag one of these like this, you can see that the other item is there. If we just drag this a little bit, something bad is going to happen. It's going to truncate that other item. Not what we want to do. What's actually happening here is that this action, implode items across tracks into items on one track, is putting the tracks into free item positioning mode. And if we turn that on in the track menu, drag it out, you see that these items are stacked on the same track. We can move them around like this when we're in this view, but if we're out of this view and we move them, then uh, they'll just uh, crop each other out essentially. So these items are stacked on top of each other. They're playing at the same time, but they're not actually attached together. If we select them both and glue them, that's one way that we can um, combine them into one item. Um, but you do have to toggle that, that view, free item positioning, to toggle that on after you implode the items. I've come up with a better option. I'm just going to uh, undo that. Let's get back to separate tracks. So custom MIDI merge items across tracks. So I'm gonna select those two items, run this action, and now we've got those two items connected onto a single track and with everything there but the performance retained. Here's what's actually happening with this action. Set item mix behavior to always mix. Implode items across tracks into items on one track. Going to glue the items, ignoring any time selections that you might have. It's going to set the item mix behavior back to the project default. So item mix behavior means that these items will be blended together. And this action will actually work with audio as well. That might be really useful for you. Uh, that custom action simplifies things because we are not in free item positioning mode. 
we don't need to worry about moving things around and things like that. Here's another example using a drum beat. Let's say that someone um, programmed drums with different MIDI files for each uh, kick, snare, and hi-hat. That's what we have here. I'll just play it back. And actually that hi-hat is a, a rim click instead of a hi-hat. So I can select that and I'll drag it up. And I want that. Okay, so there's my MIDI drum beat, but I don't like having uh, multiple tracks for the MIDI. So we can use that uh, MIDI merge function again, that custom action. So I'll run that. And that has consolidated those three files into one MIDI file. It did change the view of uh, the MIDI editor, which is unfortunate, um, but it should all be there and still working. Yeah, that sounds right. So we've done that implode action. We've done the custom MIDI merge. And I've shown you the exploding multi-channel to separate one-channel items. Let's actually split this new item up into separate uh, pitches. So this is another drum beat. And again, that... Uh, it's using rim clicks instead of the hi-hat. Uh, actually, it's supposed to be a, a floor tom. So we want to split that up and then recombine it. Sometimes it's just a lot easier to like transpose the, uh, the items, or you want to send a certain instrument to an, a certain part of the performance to another virtual instrument. This is a useful thing to do. I'm going to search for explode MIDI. We're doing explode MIDI note rows pitch to new items. I'll run that. So that's put in three new tracks and it's muted the uh, original item. It keeps all the same routing. If this wasn't already a folder track, it would make that a folder track just like we saw with the organ track earlier. So it's taken each note row and made that a new item. With this performance, it's just those three instruments, the, the rim click, the kick drum, and the snare drum, I think it was. And so it's split that up. And um, it's actually named the tracks for us. So kick, snare, open hit, and snare rim shot. So that's used the MIDI note name file um, that was active on the addictive drums track to name those tracks. All right, so that shallow rim shot, we'll just uh, make that. Need to find that floor tom. Let's do that one. Perfect. So we'll take that original file, we'll get rid of that. We'll select these, we'll run my MIDI merge action again. And go back to drum edit mode, and there's our there's our drums, and that we can actually get rid of all of these MIDI tracks, and we just have this addictive drums track. So there you go, guys, exploding and imploding MIDI items, also known as merging and splitting MIDI items. We've split them up by channels, by pitches. We've imploded them back into a single track in two different ways. First with the built-in action, which has some uh, things that uh, you need to be aware of if you're using that action, and with my MIDI merge custom action. I will list all of these actions that I showed you today in the description and in the blog post and that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Join our Facebook group, Reaper Blog Community. Support the Reaper Blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.